everybody welcome back to the composition of imagination as always i am your host and author stevie joe this is the channel where we talk about everything related to my book series angel of death no stone left unturned plot characters you know whatever we discuss it so we are back today i've got two of my book guardians i've got jason superman and moosey over here and last week this whole month actually we've been doing a murmurs of Murr county series all about elias and his transition and character development throughout the first four books last week we talked all about uh, book two false idols <laughs> this week we are going ahead and jumping into veiled commandments which is the third one so be sure you've watched the other ones as well just so you get that more well-rounded sense of character from him and you're all caught up with where we are so <laughs> the first time we see elias in veiled commandments is chapter four when everyone is at the town hall for a meeting that james has called quick backstory on this just so you know where what's happening and why they're there it's been two weeks since uh false idols which is the previous book and the conquistadors have learned that something in sky's blood can cure creatures but it's really tricky and finicky for them to get and use and they have to figure out how to use it without killing anybody well that's that the is plan. the cure yeah so yeah that's the plan that the the public knows and james the whole reason he's having this town hall meeting is because he wants to convince the county to cooperate willingly with the conquistadors and whatever it is they may need to obtain this cure so that's why we're here that's why veiled commandments opens the way it does so chapter four Guy and Eli are sitting near the front of their town hall like audience and Eli is comforting Sky kind of in these little ways because she's really nervous for what's to come. She makes that clear several times. It's hard to tell if Elias is nervous too because he always like we've talked about he's so cool and collected and you know kind of calculating in his actions um, but he does confess to himself that he's not totally 100% in this. <laughs> and he what he's about to Boy, do understatement of the year yeah, right there. what he's about to do the thing that's making sky nervous is something that is not something he would have done if he could help it he would have avoided this altogether if it could be helped um but this is the best way to fulfill primary main objective which is keep skylar safe and he keeps saying he will deal with all of this for her. But we learn that Elias is, in fact, running against James for mayor. And I say that with a sigh because I empathize with Skylar. It's not something you want to see him do. The Jericho family is shitty and conniving. So the deal that they end up making, he announces his candidacy and everybody is like, <gasps> and whatever. Well, more like James Ooh. and Cordelia are like, oh. And the deal <laughs> that Elias makes with James, because he only agreed, Elias only agreed to do this if he could have this contingency. James has until the July 4th picnic, which is in one month from this moment in the book, <laughs> James has until the July 4th picnic to produce a viable cure or he has to retire and Elias will take over. Isn't this exactly what Skylar was afraid of in the last book? Why would Elias go ahead and do it after promising her not to let the Jericho family politics entrap him? Uh, because he's looking at a bigger, a bigger issue. It's not family politics. It's the lives of the creatures in the town. Because you take a Jericho out of there, you take a Jericho out. There's always going to be another Jericho that'll that'll step right in. Yeah. 
by severing the head off and most of the body. Mm -hmm. And Elias steps in to the void there. Kind of like it, resets. It, it does. Yeah. It, 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 it stops. Yeah. And they can actually maybe move on and move in a new direction. Make some progress on some things. Yeah. You know. At some point during this whole thing, when Elias keeps saying, you know, primary main objective, like I've been saying, <laughs> keeps Tyler safe. We really have to wonder now because he's getting involved in this and he's getting in deep. So we really have to wonder, what is he actually keeping her safe from? Is it really just her family or is it something yet unseen? A little bit of both. Yeah. The unseen part is interesting, to say the least. Yeah? Yeah, because there's a mystery there. You don't know what it is. You just know it's something. Well, what do we think it is? Whatever. It's a it, abomination created by uh, Cordelia and her minions. Huh. Which we have talked about, because you had mentioned in one of the Skylar videos... That maybe the incident. Ooh, here it comes. You knew I couldn't go much longer. We uh, talked you've about been it. holding on to that I have. for a two full books. I have. And we you... didn't talk about it at all in the last uh. couple of weeks. But when, we, <laughs> when you had brought up that maybe in the incident, the reason Skylar did what she, what everybody says she did, was because Cordelia was experimenting. On like a sibling or something like that, like a sibling. And the that, sibling died. Yeah, so we don't. That may be the force unseen that Elias is protecting. There might be on. another aspect of this that you might have missed too. The incident isn't that Sky sat there destroyed everything. Sky might have actually been trying to save somebody. That's true too. Or it, defending the family. And this is just the snowball effect. Mm -hmm. So that's something, that is a good point and it hasn't been brought up yet because all we know about the incident is what the Jerichos think they know and the Jerichos And the Jerichos against, don't even know. Exactly. <laughs> and they're against Skylar. So, you know. But in the aftermath of Elias's mayoral candidacy announcement, we go to chapter 8 where he and Sky are in Creature Comforts with the new creature activist group called the Melotromi. This is the first time you see that group. And as we, can, as we can see, Elias did end up giving in to basically everything Regal requested in that initial meeting <laughs> in the last book. Uh, but there is one caveat to it all. Elias does not want to be directly involved in anything anything to do with the campaign that's why he brought in an employee and very old confidant in the way of lilith to help oh, him the... so not only did elias give in to <laughs> ragel but he also did as sky asked and hired a bar manager so that he can free up more of his time so we're kind of seeing his loyalty still he's fulfilling his promises <coughs> all of that stuff but Sky is really nervous about this whole new venture because she thinks it's going to change him. You know, politics corrupt, all of that. Eli makes a promise to her right then and there in Chapter 8. And he says, nothing is going to change me. And he says something really important alongside that. He says that he's the same man that she's always known. And that's a really important statement because you've mentioned in several videos how people are always, this whole town, it seems, is always going, I want to be how things were back then. Yeah. So that's a really important statement because this is a world where people regularly struggle to accept each other for who they are now instead of who they used to be. Here, Elias is insinuating that in whatever way he has changed, it has been with Skylar, so she knows all facets of him. Do you think that that implication also includes who he was before they encountered each other at the Devil's Fountain four years ago? No. Why not? No, because that's a, that's a side of him that he's not willing to show her yet. Okay. You can make yourself up into somebody else 
and then introduce yourself to uh, somebody like I could talk to somebody that I'm not seen since 20 30 years ago yeah when I talk to them they'll be they'll think I'm a different person even though 20 years ago it's still me yeah so it's just a different facet of exactly. you like what he's saying speaking of knowing who someone used to be <laughs> while Elias and Sky you know where this is going while Elias is with Sky and the Melotromi, none other than Azra shows up trying to get into creature comforts, not realizing that it's closed. Um, and Elias. Oh, yeah, that's going to stop it. Yeah. Well, Elias intercepts him outside, outside the basement doors, and is like, You are not coming in here. He, we're closed. You know that. Ding, ding, ding. <laughs> and. Um, he immediately, Elias immediately recognizes that something is wrong with Azra and absolutely refuses to let him enter, flat out telling Azra, boy, you look like shit. And now this conversation, this interaction they have ends up being really intimate between these two. And it's quite the change from when they last talked all the way back in book one where they were threatening each other's lives. Elias, in this moment now, even goes so far as to think to himself how similar he and Ezra are with regard to a special gem that they carry. Apparently, as we've touched on, this gem cannot leave their possession except under one sacred circumstance that requires a great sacrifice on their part. Elias had come close to making that sacrifice once, but he fell victim to fate. What do you think that sacrifice has to be? Sacrifice or power. Yeah. What else could it be? I don't it's know. It's a Superman 2 scenario. Like Superman scenario. gave up his powers to be with Lois. Okay. Okay, so that we're saying that's so what that the, is. I mean, so they Spider give up Man the Christian thing. He Spider Man didn't give them up, he kinda lost them. But that's totally different. Yeah. Well he gave up the suit too. Yeah. Yeah. But uh okay. no, the they give up the crystal to whoever their beloved is, and in doing so they sacrifice their their power. Okay. Well, by seeing these similarities Elias kind of softens toward Azra. No. And he tells him, Lilith is here, and I am willing to reunite you guys because Azra and Lilith are old, ancient lovers from way back. Supposedly. Supposedly. Azra is very skeptical, of course, because, you know, him and Elias have not exactly been on the best terms. And Elias says, honest to God, there's no trick here. <laughs> Seeing Azra's sorry condition makes Elias realize how unfair it is, and he even says this, I realize how unfair it is that I always manage to get what I want, even without magic. That's a really important notation, too. Hey, he knows how, he knows how to sit there and, and, and work some tricks on people. And Ezra, in hearing that, Ezra then in turn insinuates, well, Elias, you do come from a very powerful family. What does that mean? What kind of family do you think Eli comes from? Mystery. On top of a mystery in a sandwich of enigmas. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, mystery it is. wrapped in an enigma, wrapped in a box. It is. I mean, what kind of family do we speculate he comes from? Is it something oh, like the Jericho? Uh, what, what was that French family that ruled for like, I don't know, 100 years or something like that? Something like that. Yeah. He came from a wealthy, very powerful and magic family. Okay. And and they got their way a lot. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and maybe he's one of the last of that family. He very well. Well, could no, be. actually, may not be. I just thought of that. Who Who else would be in the family? Well, That's yet to be determined. The one. Well, there might be a sibling out there. Oh. Well, we do get into that in this, in talking about Veiled Commandments. Well, Elias' reply to Ezra is, his 
his family roots are the source of his misery lately, and there's not enough magic on earth to give him what he really wants. So this chapter ends with both guys calling a temporary truce. And Elias makes sure truce. to say that it's temporary because Ezra still owes Elias a lifetime of debt for what he did. And Elias is fully expecting him to screw up again. And that's when he will collect on everything. Do you think that by saying that, Elias is setting Ezra up for failure? Or is he just stating a pure fact that we all know? Oh, no, it's a pure fact. I mean, he... <laughs> <laughs> yep. He he has an uncanny talent of screwing up at the worst possible time. He price. does, doesn't he? I mean, he can have everything served up on a platter exactly how he wants it, and he would screw it up. He would knock the platter out of out of the hand. He would into the floor, and into somebody the sewer. <laughs> and on top of it, have somebody step on it and break it. Yeah. In chapter 9, we move on then to that chapter, Eli is waiting to talk to Lilith about Ezra, and he makes a surprising admission to himself. He says that if he knows nothing else, the moment he fears most is inevitable. He could determine exactly when that moment will happen, but he lacks the courage to see, and that's what the surprising revelation admission is. What do you think this moment is that would cause someone as strong as Elias to be so fearful? Now Guy getting that. pregnant. <laughs> yeah. That would put fear into anybody. No, no. In her case, in his case, that would be the ultimate fear because think about it. Their two, their two magics getting together and they and it gets passed down to the child. Yeah. That kid could literally move the entire universe with that much power. Yeah, that's a valid, valid theory. It turns well, into a sanguis. Ooh, no, we won't wish that. So I mean, that would that would keep you up at night. Oh no, it would. <laughs> Think you're having a, a normal kid, and it turns out. A, Oh, I'm going to kill that bastard now. Yeah. <laughs> well, we don't really formally get an answer to that question. No, no. Because That's why it's so like, open-ended. Like, yeah, uh, because Lilith comes in and interrupts his thought process. Yeah. And she comes in with her new pet, Ava. Ava is in creature <sighs> form. And Elias, much like Jason Sai, Elias cannot stand it either. Yeah. He keeps telling Lilith, you need to end this relationship, but she will it's not. It's not a relationship. It's a, to her, it is. Yeah, she's out of her mind, too. And Elias also has not told Skylar about it, believing that it's not his secret to tell. Do you agree with him? Or do no. you think he should tell Well, her? actually... Yes, it isn't his responsibility. Yeah. But primary he does, main objective. I know. <laughs> but at the same time, I mean, it is sort of riding the fence. On the surface, yes, you don't say anything because you know what? She's a grown up. Sky's a grown up. That is true. What 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 can you really say? Ava made her own choice. It, uh, I, I got a feeling she got manipulated, but hmm. that's neither here nor there. Well, we'll talk uh, about that when we talk about Ava. Yeah. But I also see the other half of it. Oh, shit, she's going to be pissed. Uh -huh. And you know what? Uh -huh. Sorry. You know, people people date the wrong person all the time. It's and, true. And you know what? Sometimes it comes out okay. Sometimes it doesn't. You got, they've got to learn. Yeah. Does he have some sort of deal going on with Lilith? Um, mm, that's a complicated answer. Okay. Old, <laughs> we kind of get into that because Lilith is an old friend, an old confidant, and an employee of sorts. So, yes and no. Okay. So, but we do get to see Elias be a little more candid here about how he feels about Sky, which is nice because he's not usually so frank. He's usually only really introspective about these feelings, but with Lilith, he shares 
that he first had hope that things were going to be okay when Sky smiled at him for the first time. Why do you think he's so comfortable sharing some of this with Lilith when he's usually so closed off? Because they, they've known each other for so long. Okay. And it, it's, it's somebody that he knows very well, so he can sit there and talk to. He feels like that. And be, able, and be able to vent yeah. where he can't with Sky as much as he would like to. Yeah. Okay. Because she knows his history. Yeah. Yeah, she does. So there, there, there's nothing, nothing to hide there. Even though Lilith doesn't care much for Sky, yeah, which is really hilarious. Oh, that puny thing over there. Yeah. I don't understand why he wants that sub creature over there. <laughs> so as the chapter ends with Elias telling Lilith that Azra will be waiting for her at the new basement club called the Devil's Playground. This. As a side note, this is deep, deep, deep in the basement below his house. And it's a very exclusive creature-only club. So when Lilith leaves, Elias locks himself in his office and opens a book with blank pages. With a wave of his hand, Elias can read the words that appear as they depict the night nearly exactly a year ago oh. when he was invited into Skye's bedroom. Oh. He reads more memories of him and Skye over the last year, but then he stops the words before they go any further, believing he's better off not knowing right now. So, last question to end dis today's discussion. What the hell kind of book is that? Yeah. Like, what is he looking at to be able he's to looking at things? He's looking at his memories. Okay. I mean, it's a, it's his life story. Okay. In this magic book. Yeah. I mean, it, it, I would say it's a journal, but with all the details and stuff, it's more, he, he's literally looking at his life written down. Okay. Well, that will be, we will find out what that book is later. <laughs> you know, the speculation. <laughs> So that ends it for today's discussion. A great introduction. Thank you guys for starting the discussion about Veiled Commandments on Wednesday. We will continue it and continue talking about Elias as he is in this book. So be sure you tune in. And we thank you. We love you. And we'll see you in a couple days. Catch up on the Angel of Death series today. The first four entries are now available directly at stevijoauthor.com.